Hi, now let's talk about hashing algorithm because this is the term you are going to see a lot. You will hear a lot when it comes to blockchain. So let's talk about this. What is a hashing algorithm? So if I will show you a block of the blockchain, this is how a block of the blockchain of a blockchain looks like. So we can see that these are the different blocks connected with each other. And this single block looks something like this. Definitely, there are various other fields also. But for demo purposes, I am considering four fields for now. That is block number, like at which number this block is present. So if, if you will see that in this case, this is block number one, block number two, block number three. Then we have data. Data means transactions. So let's say if A is doing some transaction to B, that transaction will be noted here. If C is doing some transaction to D, that transaction will be noted here. So each and every data is present in this data field. Then we have this previous hash, which we will talk in our upcoming slides. And then we have this hash. Okay. Now this is very important. What is this hash all about? Uh, right zero 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 some alphanumeric characters you can see on your screen but what is the meaning of this alphanumeric characters so this hash that you're seeing here is actually a unique identifier to this block of the blockchain okay so this is a unique identifier to this block of the blockchain what do i mean by that so every human being has a fingerprint right and this fingerprint is a unique fingerprint so no two human beings can have a same type of fingerprint okay and now this is according to science okay so just don't believe if you do not believe me just search on it and you will see a lot of scientific uh, researches on this that no human being can have identical uh thumb impressions or you know Im impressions of your of your fingers and all and the same thing happens in case of a block of the blockchain so this hash act as a unique identifier to this block of the blockchain. So let's say it is like giving a name to a block. Okay. So this is like a name given to this block. And with the help of this name, I can identify this block. Now, why do we need this identifier? You will understand in just a, in just up in our upcoming slides and upcoming videos. So just don't worry about it. So this hash is acting as a fingerprint to this block. Okay. So this hash is acting as a fingerprint to this block and how this hash is actually being generated like how do we how do we get this hash so for hashing what we use is a hashing algorithm so this sha 256 is a hashing algorithm we have other hashing algorithms also like we have kcac 256 we have sha 512 nd5 there are various hashing algorithms but in case of blockchain most of the time we use sha 256 algorithm okay now, when we give some input to this SHA-256 algorithm, that input can be in document, audio, video, in any form, this SHA-256 algorithm convert this document, audio, video, etc., anything in a 64-digit hexadecimal characters, okay? So, if you will calculate, there are 64 characters here, okay? And you have to trust me on this or you can read this also. It's up to you. And why it is called SHA-256 because there are 64 hexadecimal characters one hexadecimal character is of four bits and that's how we have this 256 bits okay so one character one hexadecimal character is of four bits and each character is of uh, since there are 64 characters so 64 into 4 we have 256 bits Okay, what are hexadecimal characters? Just search on Google, you will easily find hexadecimal characters just like a number system, like, like we have a decimal number system from 0 to 9. In the same way, we have hexadecimal number from 0 to F. Okay, that's why you are seeing these letters coming up here. Okay, now in case of a blockchain, what are the inputs? Because as we have seen, right, these, these are the inputs to this SHA-256 algorithm and that's how this is actually being, you know, generated. Now, in case of blockchain, what are the inputs? So in case of blockchain, these different fields that you're seeing on the screen act as a input. And these inputs are given to this SHA-256 algorithm. And this SHA-256 algorithm then produces this hash. And remember one thing, this is a very important point. SHA-256 algorithm always and always produce a unique identifier, unique hash. Okay, there, there will be never a time where for two different input, you will have a same hash. Okay, remember this thing. Now, let me demonstrate you this SHA-256 algorithm because I know many of you might still be confused. Let me demonstrate this in real life. So here we are on this side. 
just uh, just type SHA-256 generator and you will be on this side. And in this side, you can clearly see that we have an input and this is our output. Let's say I have written something. Let's say I have written H. So as you can see that as I have written this H, you can see that we have a hash of 64 hexadecimal characters. And one important point that you should notice here is a small change in the hash, not in this hash actually, in a small change in the input will completely create, like completely change this hash. There will be a totally random hash which has nothing to do with this edge. Like, let me show you. Let, if I, let's say I have written A here. You, now you can see that this hash generated in the previous case, it's, these two hashes are completely different from each other. Now, this is one of the beauty of SHA-256 algorithm because this is very important characteristics of a good hashing algorithm. Like for each and every input, we should have an entirely different hash. Okay. So let's say if I have written anything, I am writing anything here. You can see that never or never ever it is producing more than 64 hexadecimal characters whatsoever i'm putting here okay so this is how sha 256 algorithm works and in case of blockchain as i said uh, we have the different input fields and we use these input fields as an input to this sha 256 algorithm now definitely you might be thinking like why i'm using the like why i'm using nine characters here this is just for demonstration purpose because I, if i am going to write the 64 hexadecimal character it will be a large digit right so for demonstration purpose i'm going to use nine characters only but in actuality remember sha 256 produces 64 hexadecimal characters now let's talk about some characteristics of this hashing algorithm because i know uh, this is also one of the important question like not question doubts like uh, how like what are you know what how what make this sha 256 algorithm a good algorithm why we are using sha 256 algorithm why we are not using any other algorithm so let's talk about some of the good characteristics of a hashing algorithm so the five requirements that a every hashing algorithm must fulfill first is that it should always be one way means Let's say you are giving a data to this SAR256 algorithm and this data is now converted into an encrypted data because the hash that you are seeing on your screen is actually working as an encrypted data, right? I'm writing HA or something here and it is producing some encrypted data of that. Now, the good hashing algorithm will never give back the data, means you can produce you can go from this data point to encrypted data point means you can go from this to this but you cannot go back from encrypted to this means you can generate uh, let's say a hash from a given input but from a given hash you cannot generate the same input back so this is one of the key requirement of a hashing algorithm another thing is it is deterministic deterministic means that it always for every single input it is going to give you the exact hash hash means let's say for one two three it is producing producing some hash uh, def so it will always and always produce this def whatsoever be the case if the inputs are fixed means for uh for uh, you you will never see a situation that for a single input you are having two different hashes okay you will always have the same hash when you are giving you when you are going to give the same input so this is also one of the beauty of this hashing algorithms so abc so let's say yeah i have given example also abc produces the hash of 845 so always and always abc will produce the same hash it will never produce 849 or 948 okay third thing is it should be fast definitely it should be fast otherwise it will take if, we, if it is taking a lot of time just for producing these hashes then it will be a time taking process right now what do i mean by with the sand collision means uh, it should be very difficult it should be very difficult i think i will say exponentially difficult to have the same in to have the same hash for the two input means it should never happen the probability of happening that we have uh, two inputs two different input and these two inputs are producing the same hash it should be very 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 less it should never happen that two inputs are actually producing the same hash okay so it should withstand collisions and last that there should be a avalanche effect avalanche effect what do i mean by that as we have seen in our uh sha 256 generator right calculator you you might have seen that even i am changing a small alphabet there there is a complete new hash for h we were having a different hash for ha we were having a complete new hash right 
Now that is what we call avalanche effect. So that each and every time you are even if you are making a single change in the input, you will get a completely different hash. Okay. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any doubts, please comment below your doubts. I will be happy in taking those doubts. And if you want to directly talk to me, directly connect with me, you can join the Instagram ID, which link is given in the description, as well as the Discord community where we have 2000 plus blockchain developers. You can directly go there and you can have your doubts solved there also. Okay. And if you have liked this video, please do like this video. If you, yeah, if you want to learn about blockchain, I am, let me tell you that I'm going to regularly upload blockchain courses on this channel. So please subscribe to this channel. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Meet you soon in the next video. Bye-bye.